What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski, back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and today we're here to talk about brand new data download coming into the game, not only to introduce us with a brand new Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest, but there's also a little bit of information in regards to a new Clash event, which we'll talk about towards the end of the video. But with this Pirate Rumble Sugo Fest, it features a new Sugo Fest exclusive, which I believe the previously released legend to come out on a Pirate Rumble banner was page one and I believe that was the start of December or the start of November one of the two so it's actually been quite a while since we've had a Rumble legend and uh, I must say that this is a pretty impressive looking Rumble legend I think that this unit has some uses in normal content as well as some pretty good uses in Rumble as well so this banner is going live on the 31st of March so it's going to be starting very shortly uh, at likely at news time today we're going to get information uh, the official announcement of course of the Sugo Fest now as for the actual banner itself it looks pretty typical you've got a discounted multi you've got a pretty trash step on the second you get a guaranteed legend on the third and then the fourth multi is when you're guaranteed to get your first rumble character whether it be a rumble rare recruit or a rumble legend character and then the fifth gets you a recommended unit and of course it cycles uh, all the way to the 25th multi to get the the Legend Apu, which is a terrible decision. Definitely don't spend 25 multis for this character. But uh, let's actually go through what this character does, because there's lots to discuss here. I think he's actually super solid. So, Apu being Int, Shooter, and Driven, good class and type combinations. It is unfortunate that it is a Rumble Legend, because he does not get access to super typing or super class, which I don't really understand why they don't do that. I mean, it's a Sugo Fest exclusive Rumble unit. It's very restrictive, uh, very hard to get your hands on these units. So I feel like for the difficulty that they are to acquire, they should have these types of effects, you know, that normal legends get access to. So a bit of a missed opportunity there. But anyways, as for what he does, uh, his captain ability boosts only Shooter and Driven by five times, but then boosts their attack each time you defeat something each turn. So it's very similar to version one legend Kuzan. Every time you kill something, his attack buff will stack up, but as soon as you pass a turn where you do not kill an enemy, you reset your attack stack back down to the 5 times multiplier. But the fact that he can get up to 5.5 is pretty good, and that's definitely going to be used in content. He also makes int, bomb, and super bomb slots matching, which is really interesting because the fact that you don't have too many units in the game that make those slots beneficial, uh, specifically super bomb being more of a newer mechanic. And then, uh, then he also has the effect that for the first 10 turns of the quest, your crew is immune to remove SFX, which is the blindness debuff, and limit number of taps debuff. This is the first character in the game that has the ability to remove the limit number of taps effect. It's very bizarre. Uh, and this is also the first captain in the game that removes the blindness debuff in their captain effect. But obviously there is the inherent drawback is that it only occurs for the first 10 turns. So you really have to build your team in a certain way to actually make this very useful because most of the time, or well, specifically limit number of taps usually occurs on the final stage of a quest. And there just aren't too many situations where you are going to need to remove that. But it is nice that this character has a unique mechanic that this character only gets access to. So it already adds inherent value to this unit. Even if it's not going to be used that much, the fact that this character has unique abilities that no one else has is good. Then, of course, no super typing or super class, which would have been nice. But a 10 turn max cooldown special, which is very low, makes it easier to land perfects for 5 turns. That's not very useful. But then he changes the top and bottom row slots into Super Bomb, which remember with his Captain effect, he treats them as beneficial. He locks your slots for one turn and gives you a 1.4 chain boost for one turn. So if, if the special is just that, you know, it's just kind of whatever. But then it further says that if you land two perfects, then you get a 1.6 chain boost in the next turn. But then after that, if you land three perfects in the turn after that, you get a 2.0 chain addition in the turn uh, it's like basically the third turn or like the third stage after it So it's very similar to anniversary Luffy in a way where there's like two separate turns of tapping perfects to get additional buffs in the following turn So that's kind of interesting the fact that this guy can have essentially the highest chain boost in the game Aside from New Year's Legend Nami right when you have her max charge that is the best chain boost in the game But this character can potentially reach that as well um, so, overall, uh, the special and the captain effect, unique abilities for sure, I don't really see this character being used that much, but I like that he has some unique stuff going on. 
Uh, with his crewmate ability, he does make bomb and super bomb matching, which means if you do opt to use him as a crewmate on your team, you can actually still make use of his special, which changes the top and bottom row slots into super bomb, so you at least can make them matching. And then he also makes your crew immune to blindness debuff, which is a very cool crewmate ability. Unfortunately, doesn't have the fear resistance potential ability, which would have been a really nice addition, just to ensure that you always can remove it. But... As for the potential abilities, he has Critical Hit, which is not very good. He has Side Damage Reduction, which is pretty garbage. But then he does have Barrier Pierce, which is one of the better Limit Break abilities in the game. And of course, a shooter with Barrier Penetration is going to go hand in hand with characters like Beckman and Lucky Roo. You want to be using characters that are, that have that potential ability just to ensure that you can make use of those characters' captain abilities. So the regular kit by itself is like is, 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 is interesting, obviously, as we said. But then the support effect... Which, the weird thing about his support is that it only supports very specific supernovas. You've got Basil Hawkins, which makes sense. But then you've got your Rogue and Capone, which I don't understand why he's, he's supporting those two. And then he also supports Blackbeard, of all people. And he also supports Kaido. So the only characters that actually make thematic sense is Kaido and Hawkins. The other three don't make a lot of sense, but look, Eurogue, Capone, Blackbeard, the fact that they are receiving additional support units in general is a good thing. And then the actual support itself, whenever you're inflicted with Chain Reduction or Blindness Debuff, he removes it by three turns. It's a, it's a pretty good support effect. We've seen with Marquino support, which can attach to Shanks uh, and all of his other crew members, that support has been useful in a lot of content. So I like the fact that this character is, is another unit now we can use to remove the Blindness Debuff. But now we get into his Rumble stuff, which is the main reason why you would pull for a character such as this. So let's have a look at his Rumble ability. So he's going to give buffs to Int. He's not a shooter or a driven focus unit. So you have to try and squeeze him in already to a really stacked Int team. So, and the fact that he is driven as well, he's got good synergies already. But he gives Int level 6 speed, level 3 CT increase. But then furthermore, Psy enemies get defense down level 6. Like, that is ridiculous. Allowing your Int team, which... Int, int teams are already pretty good right now. And they have a really decent matchup against Psy teams. Aside from maybe one or Law, which can really help you in that matchup. But this is just giving additional debuffs to Psy. But the, the obvious downside to this is the fact that this does not add additional bulk to the Int team. And the Int team is renowned for being very bulky with HP buffs, defensive buffs... And this character doesn't add any of that, and he doesn't even give any attack buffs either. He's only focused around making your team faster with generic speed and CT increasing effects. So you have to take that into consideration when you opt to build an int team with this guy on it. When you have a look at his special though, the special is pretty good. Large range 2.7 times damage, which is good. Then your int allies receive level 7 attack, level 7 speed for 25 seconds. And then targets side type enemies that ignores defense for 1.2 times damage. This is a ridiculously good special ability. The fact that it, it the large range is, is the big thing. The, the, the damage is going to be hitting a lot of targets. The fact that he then will apply the attack buffs, that kind of hurts. I wish he applied the attack and speed buffs prior to his generic damage. But he does apply the attack buffs before he does the damage through defense against the Psy enemies. And the fact that it, it does target Psy enemies specifically means that it's always guaranteed to hit. So... <laughs> I think there's a lot going on here with this with this Apu, and I think that he could be a very good option for int-driven teams specifically. Another thing that a lot of people are probably going to overlook is his resistance, is the fact that he does reduce damage from Psy by 30%, but he completely evades action bind, which means if you are using him in an int team to take on opposing Psy teams, he can never be action binded by your opposing uh, V2 Odins, which I think is a really nice touch. So this guy's going to be good, I think, uh, moving forward into the, into the future with uh, int-driven teams. He does not, unfortunately, have any GP effects. I don't understand why they release these Grand Party Legends, uh, the, these uh, Rumble Legends, should we say, and they don't give them Grand Party abilities. Huge missed opportunity there, so I'm not a big fan of that. But in normal content and uh, in PvP, I think he's pretty cool. So I would love to get my hands on him and test him out in a, in a, in a specific team for, for Pyre Rumble for sure. But again, it's on a Pyre Rumble banner, and the chances to pull these units are very low. Typically, the legend rate is only around 5% for these generic banners. So it is what it is, right? But another thing we need to talk about before we end this video is the April Fool's Clash event. 
So we have had a bit of a tease as to what that is going to be. And it's going to be the Clash of the Three Captains. Where you've got Luffy, Law, and Kid. And at this current point in time, this is what the character looks like. But according to the icons that we have received on Twitter, we can see that this character looks like it's going to be super evolving. So I assume that this is going to have a, a joke artwork that occurs with the super evolution. And this is kind of crazy because we haven't had a clash in a very long time. So I like that we're getting a new raid boss in the game. But as for what this character does, the Luffy, Law and Kid, they are Psy Fighter Slasher, which is interesting. Captain ability is a really minor health boost very minor attack boost but then it gives themselves a 3.5 times attack boost so low boost to the crew high boost to the single unit but then it gives you a chance at dropping uh, an extra drop at the end of the quest which is kind of cool uh the special ability though is interesting where it changes your right column slots into recovery boosts your crew's orbs by 1.75 for two turns and then completely removes end of turn damage attack buffs and enrage from all enemies and then you get 80% damage reduction for one turn. Now, I could be wrong here, but this might be one of the first units in the game that completely removes enemies' attack up, end of turn damage, and enrage. It's a very cool effect. There aren't too many situations where you need to remove those abilities because a lot of the time you just want to kill the enemy. You want to be using your specials to enhance your damage, not really mitigate what they're going to do to you. So I don't know how useful this is going to be, but I could see potentially like maybe in the treasure map there's going to be a really hefty attack buff or enrage or end of turn damage effect. And this special might be really good in order to remove that. Potentially it'll be like a death damage hit where this special removes the enemy's attack buffs which would increase their damage. But then you can also use the special to remove it and then also give you damage reduction effects potentially. Um, and I think that this unit will super evolve and then I would expect the special to become a lot more potent because as of right now the special isn't amazing so we'll have to wait and see uh, interestingly enough as a crewmate this character completely is immune to stun which you don't see too often either that's kind of bizarre um, no real key support and the rest of their like rumble kit is just kind of bad so you're not really going to be using them in rumble but interestingly enough it is a new clash that's going to be arriving very very shortly so that is pretty much going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching the video let me know your thoughts and opinions on legend apu down below in the comment section of course it is apu's debut sugo fest exclusive into the game so maybe we'll get uh, a v2 one in the future that actually gets access to super type or super class or something like that Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that, I'll see you guys within the next video.